All right, Dr. Nguyen here. I want to talk to you about this case. I apologize for the bite wing. We had another bite wing that actually showed the crestal bone, but I did not upload that one. So we have a large carious decay, tooth number five, patient's in a lot of pain, and elects to extract it over trying to root canal treat the tooth, hard tissue crown lengthening, and a ventral crown. So when we're approaching a case like this, it's very important to realize how much force you're applying to the tooth before it fractures. When you have the forceps on the tooth, what's very important is that you try to grab the tooth as apical as you possibly can onto the root. Because if you're grabbing the crown at the point where the CEJ meets, you most likely will fracture that tooth and therefore will make it much more difficult for you to extract the tooth. So here, our forceps are very deep, as far deep onto the crestal bone as we can without destroying the bone onto the root structure. Now, when we have the forces on the root structure, we know that when the crown is moving, we know that the entire tooth is moving in that bone and we're causing a lot of expansion to that bone, which is good. We don't want to place the forceps too high up onto the crown because when we do do that, what we're looking at is crown flexure instead of the actual tooth moving. So here we're holding the tooth towards the buckle and we're rotating it around in our figure eight motion. So here I'm holding it towards the buckle because I know that's where the tooth wants to go because the buckle expansion that I'm feeling with my thumb tells me that it's within a limit to where we're able to compress the bone but not have the buckle plate fracture on us. And here the tooth is out. You can see how apical the forceps are onto the root. And here we place the sutures and we have the patient bite down on the gauze. Okay, thank you very much and take care.